going to be somewhat rookie rankings. I know that you all enjoyed that name quite a bit for uh, the rookies. So but, I've got my rankings made up, and you know Josh was talking mad shit on them. Billy, I don't think you agreed with them. Um, John said he's way down the board at wide receiver fifteen. Well, your but, your wide receiver rankings are wild to me. Okay, so. no, no, no. I want to be clear here. I loved everything that you did until about twelve. And okay. I, I'm, no, I'm not, it's, okay, so Josh, say, do you want to expand on that? No, Josh this is, is called mad somewhat that I have, rankings. Josh is mad that I have Isaiah Spiller ranked ahead of James Cook. And I do because I truly believe that Eckler is happy that he has a backfield mate. Finally, he's been openly asking for one. And Isaiah Spiller has the talent to really excel in that role and eventually not usurp Eckler. But Eckler is getting up there in age a little bit. I think it's for a dynasty, especially if you're a rebuilding team, buying that guy, you're going to get him this year, some production, but in the future, I think he has way more upside than James Cook does. I mean, you're, well, we'll, we'll get into is, this a little bit more when we talk about the ones viable for this season, but Spiller is definitely viable for this season, I think. And I just wanted to I, tell you why Josh was so upset disagree. about my well, no, I know, but like, no, no, Eckler, no, no, no. no. Eckler's gonna... not a, when has Eckler ever been a three? They've trusted him to be a three down back last year. They've had to use him in that role the last they, two years because no, they, they don't have anybody. Well, no, no, not even that. They used other guys in there too, and he has. He was gotten... absolutely a three down back the last two years, basically. Yes, just because this is this is the ball. This is speaking spoken from an Austin Eckler manager. Um, you can uh, tell fan because the rest of us know Austin Eckler's getting you know you know vultured at the goal line every now and then. Yeah, Austin Eckler's, you know, 206 rushes last year was super like, man, he really did, was not a three down back, honestly, I have to say. And then the whole, you know, 94 targets, just 300, you know, attempts. Yeah, not that was honestly, that was not enough. You can tell who has him in Dynasty. He needs more. You can tell who has him in Dynasty. It won't be 200 this year. You want to yeah, put some two, fireball on that? 300 touches and 20 touchdowns. Did terrible last year. He, he, he did won't, not. He was he not a three down running back. He won't have three hundred touches this year. Fireball better two, right now. Have two, we'll have two hundred rushes this that year. That is a stupid bet. I'm not betting on that. I don't think. Oh really? Have okay. Three hundred well, touches. Back. So what? Why would I don't, you? Why would that be I don't think anyone should have three hundred touches. It's terrible. There should be two running backs. I'm not saying that there shouldn't be two running backs. I'm saying that you're saying that Austin Eckler wasn't a three down back last year, and he absolutely was. Okay. Fair enough. We're going to put this Isaiah off Spiller. talk to bed for a second, guys. Uh, what we need to go What's over. This is Isaiah um, Spiller talk. I'm yeah. more excited about him. Yes, but time out real quick because we have put a lot of time into the ID or the Dynasty Index. Um, we've been uploading these rookies in here. We've been doing all that. So get on the Patreon and get that. If you guys want to win your leagues, we have information. We're, up, we're updating notes and everything on there. It's pretty affordable for the amount of information that you do get. So get on there. Check it out, and uh, we're happy to have you there. So anyway, Isaiah Spiller, Billy, go. No, no, you know what? Let's let's start at number one. Let's start at number one. This is somewhat yeah, rookie rankings, let's and we haven't it. even talked about number one. Okay, well, the number one, number again. one's obviously Brees Hall. It's um, not. Okay. It's not Brees Hall. This is, in, this is right. interesting. Why is it not Brees Hall to you? As Joe wrote to this, do not overthink this one. Overthink this one. This is the New York Jets. There are four people that are not going to be able to be fantasy relevant. Yes, Michael Carter will take a backseat to Brees Hall. Brees Hall will be the number one running back on the New York Jets. He is not. We saw what Le'Veon Bell did. I understand he took a year off, never did good. When was the last time now. when was the last time the New York Jets had a great rusher? Chris Ivory in 2016 or something like that. Yeah. Right, no, well, not buying Brees Hall. The number one pick is uh Take your pick between London and Traylon Burks. This is like going to the roulette table and just putting it on red every time because it's just been hitting red. But eventually, it's, it could hit I, black. I have to. And bet. what are you I would do? rather take Kenneth Walker over Brees Hall right now. Why is the that? The Jets are a team on the upswing. Sala is an old school dude. They've been beefing up the defense. They beefed up the how line. Many, they how have many wide teams receivers. have been on the upswing for years that never make it? The Jets are in that conversation every time. No I don't, team. The Jets have had, had 15 years, even remotely. The Jets are still a bottom five team. I don't think so. 
Just because they have talent. You think they're mean, a bottom five Why team? the hell would you take Drake London at one? Because Drake London has a future. Brees Hall is going to have his future wasted on the New York Jets. You I needed to get this the off. Jets my chest. are a bottom five team. Yep. Wow. I I disagree. I'm not with even going to argue with you. Brees Hall I, is the pick here. I would say he could be a bottom ten, but bottom five is strong. I'll take um, a fireball bet on bottom seven right now. Meet in the middle, and I'm giving you one one yeah, ranking. Well, I was going to have him like eight or nine, so seven's like really close to that. Uh, sure, I'll, I'll take that. Yeah, why not? First fireball bet of the new season. I think. Damn it, I don't have my notebook here. Okay, well, I'll just have to write that down. All right, anyway, we, I get it. Brees Hall, he should be the number one guy. If he would have landed anywhere else, in my opinion, he would have been the number one guy. Fair enough. Okay. I'm not judging the talent. I'm judging the landing spot. The four the four people, Elijah Moore, Brees Hall, Garrett Wilson, and Michael Carter, cannot all be fantasy relevant. Yes, you can scratch Michael Carter well, out of so, that. Okay, okay. If you, had a hard power, if you had a power rank him right now, who's going to get the most – out of that offense, fantasy wise, Elijah Who, Moore. So Elijah Moore would be first. Who after that? Garrett Wilson, because they're going to be losing a lot. See that? That's where I disagree. I think it'll be Brees Hall. Josh, what you're forgetting here is Zach Wilson is the quarterback, and Elijah Moore looked really good last year when Zach Wilson wasn't playing. So I don't think that unless he takes a massive step this year, I don't think he's going to walk I, into week I one don't think feeding two wide receivers. Plus they got Uzama there. Plus, they got Carter. I think what they're trying to do is take all the pressure in the world off of him, and that's why they got Brees, and that's why Michael Carter is there, and they took him last year. I think you're going to see a lot of rushing off of there until he develops some more, and then you're going to see the receivers start to kick in. So Brees Hall is an immediate impact player. I think you can draft him. Immediate impact? You think you're going to get something out of him this year? Yes, immediately. Yes. Week one. That. I, I I've got him at RB twenty one, I think RB twenty. So I have him basically in RB two. I, I, mean. I know he's going to hop for no good reason, but I, I that's not one that I'm excited about. Interesting. That's just because you hate the Jets, and then when he is, you're going to be like, "Wow, man!" Just no, I'll, I'll own I'll own up to it. I'm just saying I think Kenneth Walker has a better opportunity than Brees Hall this year. I how do you think Rashard Penny is gone and forgotten? He's not going to. I think Michael like, Carter is a better running back than we're giving notice as well, but. Yeah, I don't. I don't like it. I don't like landing spot. I'm sorry. Okay, to Fair go enough. with you, I love Kenneth Walker's landing spot. I mean, he arguably had one of the best running or running back landing spots based on opportunity. Rashad Penny looked good for five games last year. He hasn't looked good for four years. I don't think Pete Carroll trusts him. I, you know, Kenneth Walker is a lot more talented than Rashad Penny. Just, I mean, here's the thing: the team is out. terrible. Like that's that's what I keep getting stuck on, and I know there's fantasy value in terrible teams. I get it, and it will always be. No, that I, I I think but my the team logic is sucks. Seattle like, is not running Drew Lock in at week one. There's no way. There's going to be another quarterback yeah, there. I, if they the bring in Baker that. Mayfield, maybe but, I'll change my mind. But, but the like, New York, yeah, no, that'll be your new team. That's fine. Uh, but the New York Jets I, will I'm be gonna, running Zach Wilson, and that's why I don't feel good about Brees Hall. That's why I don't. It's going to be so hard to be a Seahawks fan. Yeah. That's fair. oh, that's gonna be tough. Okay, well, all right. Anyway, yeah. let's get past yeah, number yeah, one. Yeah, I'm get, sorry. We can, t- we can, we can. Okay, so we we'll go Brees Hall one. Though. We will concede Kenneth Walker two, even though I don't know if I believe in that t- completely. But whatever. We're this is somewhat rankings, right? Not really on the on the nose. Uh, so I think we each have a different wide receiver number one. So this is I I feel like can we state our case for each? Yeah. Uh, my mine's Traylon Burks. Sounds like Josh is Drake London and Joe. You're yours wrong. was You're Garrett wrong. Wilson, never, right? You don't even mine's listen. Mine's Jamison Williams. Okay, is that what yours is? No, mine's Traylon Burks. Oh, well, why did he say Tra- Drake London? Maybe uh, I said either Drake London or Traylon Burks should go before Brees Hall. Is what I said. Oh, okay, fair enough. All right, I well, don't like Drake London, I really don't. That's fine. I well, okay, you're not. You don't like the the quarterback, which is only a one year situation, so not something you're gonna have to worry about next year. Now, Traylon I'm Burks more, steps into the best situation. I'm more excited for Traylon Burks friend. because they're going to force feed the hell out of him because they don't – I mean, I get it. Robert Woods is there, and I appreciate him coming back from his injury to take some of the touches. But am I? do I think he's going to be a 100% player for the rest of his career coming off that injury? Not necessarily. Ooh, and, we're, on, we're on opposite sides of this dime, but I like that. What, for Woods? Um, so I think – Robert Woods is going to be fine. I mean, he, a lot of people come back from ACL injuries, especially wide receivers, running backs a little bit tougher. I just don't um, like the age. I think, well, I think 
what's going to happen here is Tannehill's feeling some sweat behind his brows with Malik Willis chomping at the bit. <laughs> hey, no, no. Malik Willis isn't going to be a starter this year, but Tannehill no. still feels the sweat. He might be, though. He might be, though. If, they, if things aren't going – if things are going south and, like, the Colts are starting to run away with the division a little bit, I think you're going to start hearing some Malik Willis chants, I don't know, probably, like, week six or seven. I like Traylon Burks for the simple fact that Tannehill's sweating – and the fact that Robert Woods is there. If it was just on the shoulders of Traylon Burks, I'm not a big fan. But the fact that there are two receivers and Derrick Henry, I think that he gets leaned on heavily. I think Traylon Burks, uh, they try to force fit, force fit the piece that he is A.J. Brown. So they're going to give him a lot of targets really quick yeah. to try to show that they made the right choice because they don't want to lose the fan base. I agree completely. By the way, put your everybody out there, Offensive Rookie of the Year, Traylon Burks. Slide no a little quarterback. Slide enough. a little cash on it right now, just in case, because I think they are going to try to prove that this was not a mistake so hard that it's they're going to force feed the hell out of him, whether he catches the ball or not. It's just going to be trying to cover up a bad mistake when they traded AJ Brown. Sorry, Joe. Go ahead. No, I I got JMO as my number one wide receiver. One, I think he's the best wide receiver in this draft class. What he can do on the field is ridiculous. And I think he steps into one of the best situations. Uh, Goff should be able to sustain him this year, uh, just get him through once he's healthy. But if he gets linked to Bryce Young or CJ Stroud, he's just going to be wide. I mean, you can't cover Swift, Amon Ra, you know, maybe Charks there next year, Hawkinson. You, you have Jamison Williams just freaking streaking all the time, wide open. He's going streaking. He can bring his green hat. Naked. Dude. Okay. I All right. I haven't been more thrilled with the wide receiver in a long time. All right. I, I, I agreed with Billy once. I want to go ahead and agree with uh, Joe here as well. I don't think he's the number one for the simple fact that I think Traylon Burks and Drake London have, I, and I, I could interchange Drake London and Jamison Williams, but I can't introduce him with uh, or interject him with Traylon Burks. Jamison Williams is at least my number three wide receiver. Yes, he's before Garrett Wilson. I've already told you exactly why. This Christian Watson sky more hype we'll get into in a second, but I think there's no way Jameson Williams goes behind them, and I've seen it in drafts where Christian Watson and Sky Moore and Alave are before him. Jameson Williams is a bona fide. He, and if he wasn't injured and if he didn't go to a team that didn't have a quarterback, he'd be number one. But I think it's more of next year, Jameson Williams, especially coming off the injury, I think they're going to ease him into it this year, and I love Jameson Williams. He would have been the number one wide receiver off the board if it weren't for his injury. So, yeah, completely agree. And I feel like for people out there, <clears throat> I feel like there is going to be some kind of like, oh, is this guy Kadarius Tony thing? And I, I don't want anybody to freak out about that. He is injured going into the season. He might not be used a ton for the first six weeks. Like, we don't know what that's going to look like until we get to training camp and get into camp news. But I just, like, don't panic. It's not a Kadarius Tony situation where Kadarius Tony has one week where everybody's like, oh, shit, that's why he's the first round, and then he doesn't play the rest of the season. It's not going to be that. It's it's not that kind of situation. So I feel like we just need to quell that now before we get into the summer and Jamison Williams isn't practicing because he's hurt. All right, so let's let's uh, let's go ahead and recap here at least the top five picks. Uh, Brees Hall, Kenneth Walker, Jamison Williams. Okay, top six. Drake London, Burks, and Garrett Wilson, in whatever order you please, but those are the top six picks. Except those for Drake are. London. <laughs> okay okay joe. Joe. you have but... him at five i don't even want to hear it uh and then this is when we start getting into things uh we got a lave chris watson okay yes only two running backs in the top 10 uh basically chris watson alave sky Moore, and i think we're all pretty high on dotson i mean i'm, I'm very high right. he, he's getting slept on quite a bit um but yeah he should be up there the good thing about Dotson, you're probably get him, getting him in the early second. So anyone with the number one or number two pick, you're probably getting Dotson for relatively free. Yeah, I got him at 15 in our draft. And yeah, he, I was absolutely thrilled about that. And I feel like people were getting Dotson because it was like, oh, I guess I'll take him. I know he's good. But like in reality, this is the perfect landing spot for a guy like this. Deami Brown did nothing. Uh, mm -hmm. McLaurin's been looking for a running mate. And Dotson has the talent. I think it's one of those things that like, oh, because he's the seventh or eighth wide receiver off the board, you're like, eh. But like, really, you should be excited about that. Yes. Yeah. I I, I think people are kind of freaking out a little bit over um, 
well, there's a lot of mouths to feed there. I get it. It, it. On paper, you have Logan Thomas, Curtis Samuel, Antonio Gibson, Terry McLaurin, J.D. McKissick. I, I get it. You can run down all that list. I think he creeps up throughout the season. Like how Amon Ra supposedly like came out of nowhere. I think that's going to be Deshaun, or Deshaun Watson. Jahan Dotson <laughs> from the very switch, start. Switch the letters I, around. I didn't even know those rhymed until I just said that <laughs> accidentally right there. Uh, but it, I think you're going to find that out very early in the season that he is a very good slot possession receiver, and he's going to be one of those guys that gets like the 10 catches for 90 yards and a touch, and you're going to be like, wow, I can't believe that that's what he is. But, you know, he's a good check down guy. Yeah, he's a hell of a value right now, and if you if you see him slip into the second, make a trade, get it back up to the late first, early second, and get him. I don't think you'll be upset at all. You're going to love what you get in him. For as, sure, for sure. as we've slightly covered this top 10, is there anyone you guys wanted to focus on that should be in the first round of rookie drafts? Um, top 12 at the very least. Most people are in 12 team leagues. so I kind of want to focus on the Christian Watson, Olave, and Sky Moore trio okay. right there. I didn't um, need to skip over it. I'm just trying to – this is called the somewhat ranking. So. No, you're fine. I, You know, these guys – they have great opportunities. Um, I just, I really want people to pump the brakes on Sky Moore for a minute. He's not Tyree Kill. He, I think he's more of a possession guy myself. I think, you know, they're going to use him similar to the way they tried to use Tyree Kill uh, last year um, on that one. But we still have Juju there. We have MVS there for deep shots. We have Kelsey there. So, I don't think you're going to get a guy who's going to be a perennial, you know, top 10 receiver right here at this spot um you know christian watson he keeps getting knocked for his drops um on that one which he did have with bad qb play i like his spot a lot um but aaron Rodgers is not going to have that i mean i think when he actually gets good balls thrown his way he's going to catch them and be just fine but if the drops are an issue you know he could be nowhere near a first round pick in a rookie drafts uh with his career and then chris Olave with the addition of uh uh, Jarvis there and Michael Thomas coming back. Um, I like where he's at a lot, but you know, I think those three right there, you're, you're really hoping a lot of stuff breaks right for you with those receivers at that spot. All right. Okay, go ahead. No, I just, just want to go back to sky more. I just want to show our work a little bit. So I was doing some research over the weekend for uh, we're going to do some team previews coming up here pretty quick. Uh, be on the lookout for that. But uh, I actually looked into sky more a little bit on underdog right now. If you guys had to guess what, like, wide receiver, what out of like, you know, for redraft? what wide receiver? Yes, for redraft, for best ball. Forty. Where, where do, what would you think he's wide receiver? Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with stupid hype for no reason because people love rookies and people love good teams. I'm gonna go with like wide receiver twenty five or something stupid. Okay, well, he hadn't gotten up that high yet because that's that's where Juju Smith Schuster is. But he's wide receiver 40, 81 overall. Damn, I hit it. You hit it that, on the nose. You did. And the thing is, is that is way too high, way too high at wide receiver 40. Like, for example, and I know that this is a bad direct example, but like Marquez Valdez Scantling is wide receiver 51. I, I Do I think that Sky Moore and Marquez Valdez Scantling are going to be terribly far away in points at the end of the season? No, not really. I really don't. I don't, I don't like either. you. Like you said, we're going to get into this later, but I think Marcos Vettel Scantling for the price and not to mention just in general could easily become the wide receiver one out of those three. I think he's the buy. Give me that at that price. Like seriously, yeah. 50, 51, like give me that over Sky Moore, a rookie at wide receiver 40. Wait, like have we, we haven't even seen what Patrick Mahomes can do with a rookie wide receiver because the only one we've ever had other than that that none of them have turned out and Nicole Hardman, he, Nicole Hardman uh, exactly. None of them have really worked out like we thought. So, okay. I don't want to dog on sky more too much. My thing is I want to talk about why Christian and Watson, Alave and more are okay. Alave, I think is the one person who was basically a top five wide receiver. I think he would have leapfrogged maybe even a couple of these receivers. If he went to the right landing spot. Yes. I think Alave, I don't think Michael Thomas comes back. Number one. I think he's either out or done. I don't know what's going on. It's been two years. There, he doesn't look right. I think Olave has a lot more promise than we think. The talent is there. I think, but the reason between Watson, Olave, and Moore that we're talking about is because they landed on, at least more on the Watson Moore, is they landed on good teams. And so 
Watson, I know that you, Joe, had a, a bona fide crush on uh, Watson over here, but um, in general, if Watson didn't go to Green Bay, if he would have went to the New York Jets, we wouldn't be talking about him right now. And if Sky Moore didn't go to KC, we wouldn't be talking about him right now. He'd be in the second round, basically. So my thing is, don't reach for these guys. If you get him in the back end of the first, I'm happy with that. Chris Olave, I think you can get him at seven. I think I got him in a draft at seven. I, I'm not excited enough to reach over some of these other guys that we've talked about. Even Joe hates Drake London. Like you're obviously grabbing Drake London in the top six. Like, do not grab Christian Watson or Sky Moore at number five. But you're wrong if you do. Yeah, you have a lot of hope. I just think we need to pump the brakes on those three a little bit because, like you know, the underdog thing. I mean, that's just kind of getting out of hand there. Yeah, and it's it's hope. I mean. All underdog is right now is best ball hope trafficking, and I get it, but we just need to maybe relax a little bit on it. But 100%. 100%. Okay, well, let's.